Hello once again, this is Jim Ducart with TND How Videos. Today we are in sunny Phoenix, Arizona, watching Arizona Public Service install trip savers on some lines. This video is sponsored by Burns and McDonald. Now our utility crews are not only installing trip savers, they're also double dead ending all three phases of this line. So let's start up on the in the bucket on the top of the line. The first thing to do is to disconnect the lines from their existing cross arm, uh, the insulator that's holding them in. You see he uses his hot stick Tension to pull up. a pin Get out. out and hold your load. And now you hear him calling the line back. Yeah. Going to be held in by that hoist. And now we go back to ground where he's handing up the bells for the dead ends. Also, importantly, handing up the new heavy cross arm which can support more weight that the trip savers will add. Next, back up on the pole, we are going to see our lineman Eric take off the old cross arm and then hot tuna. he's going to be handed a drill. Kind of thought that hot tuna terminology was fun. Drill a hole in this hole so that he can install a bracket that's going to hold on one of these dead ends. You're going to see that here in a second as he reaches around the pole to attach one of the dead ends. There it is. So now that he's got that in place, he can lift that heavy arm onto the pole. The next task is to attach these bells or dead ends on each side of the new cross arm. See him doing that. Uh, securing those in place. All right. He pronounces that good to go. And now they're going to pull the line back into its insulator on top of the that cross arm. Good, man. Put that in place and then secure it with the pin, twisting his hot stick to uh, latch or land that pin and uh, keep the line in place. Now it's time to start the dead ending process and by that we first install a grip on the line using a hot stick, these lines are energized, and then a set of blocks and you're going to see him use his hot stick in a second here to attach to both the dead end and to the grip that's been placed on the line. Once he gets that attached you see Eric's gotcha. doing the same thing on the other side of the cross arm. Now this is interesting, here's where we are clamping the wires into the existing wire in order to create the dead end. Again using hot sticks all along. See one more here, this is the center wire and you see the teamwork between the two linemen with their hot sticks. Right on. Having thus dead ended two of the three phases, it's time to secure the third phase and its insulator using that pin and now we see in the background uh, phase three has been dead ended and they have line sleeves and blankets up so they can hang some switches see on the bottom of this switch there's a gold connector plate for the trip saver which we'll see more in a bit now he is measuring 60 or jumpers you hear him say 60 on one 45 on the other. And 45. And now he's going to 45. cut away the insulation at the end of one of these jumper wires. Because next you're going to see him pull that jumper up over the cross arm and attach it to the top of the yeah. switch. See a nice uh, view there of it making the attachment at the top of the switch. They'll also attach a jumper to the bottom, you see those gold brackets again. Oh, there he is. Now we're back at ground level and they're handing up the trip savers. And uh, he's gonna hang it on the wire on his bucket. And this would be a good time to take a look at the trip saver itself, which opens and closes internally in order to isolate phases from a downlined or faulted condition. Each trip saver weighs about 25 pounds. And now we're back up in the bucket on the line, hanging the first of three trip savers that will go on this three-phase line. 
and he's going to verify good closing operation by snapping it up into place before energization of that trip saver. He's going to hang the other two trip savers right next to it on the line here and again verify good closing operation. Trip saver. Now in order to complete the trip saver installation they have to take jumpers from both the bottom of the switch and top of the switch and I'll let Jason tell us how this, what this accomplishes. The saver will be now the part of the circuit, so the current flow will go through the trip saver, okay. through the bottom side to the line going back up on the overhead line again. Got it. And then they will remove the jumpers going over the top of the arms. Now the final task is to push the trip saver, snap them into the closed position doing that from the bucket with a long hot stick. Not an easy task, first of all, to aim it just right and then push 25 pounds up from that leverage point. But as he snaps the third trip saver up into position, the installation is complete. The final operation will be to come back and remove those jumpers over the top of the cross arm. So with that, we hope you have enjoyed our TND How video on a trip saver installation. Many thanks to Participating Utility Arizona Public Service. And this video is sponsored once again by Burns and McDonnell. I am Jim Ducart with TND Howe Videos. Thank you as always for watching.